this should be fun. Okay, so this may or may not get controversial, but let's recreate the Dead Mouse signature sound, the Dead Mouse block. Yeah, that one. Hey, welcome back to your brand new 101 music production tips tutorial. My name is Tills from the 16 bar. Now, if this is your first time around this channel and you would like to learn more about synthesizers or electronic music production in general, feel free to hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to make sure that you don't miss anything. Okay, so before we get going, I got a couple of disclaimers for you. Number one, I'm not showing anything new here. What I'm about to show you is already all over the internet, YouTube. As a matter of fact, Ted Mouse already was showing how to do this in his very own masterclass. Everything I'm about to show you was created by me in my very own digital audio workstation. And since you cannot copyright a chord progression or a sound, trust me, there's nothing I'm doing here that would be against the law. The reason why I did decide to make this video is because I remember when I came across the first video showing how this is actually done, I went like, holy, it's so simple and it sounds so amazing. And most of you probably already know how to do this. But for those few who do not know how to make this sound, this video should be fairly entertaining. All right, ready? Let's jump into Ableton. All right, so now that we are here in Ableton, I'm going to use Serum to recreate the Dead Mouse signature pluck. And then I'm going to use a couple of chord progressions to showcase what it sounds like. Let's listen to the chords first. This is just a simple A minor chord progression and I'm using a Production Music Live Ableton clip, which you can find in PML's MIDI package. And if you're interested in checking that out in further detail, I'm gonna throw a link in the description section below for you. The Dead Mouse block is actually constructed from a number of sawtooth waveforms. This is the initial setting of Serum, which comes with the sawtooth waveform. So the first thing that you do is you're going to multiply this wave. Let's do four. What this will do, this will take multiple copies of this waveform and it's going to spread them out in the stereo field as well as detune them a bit, which will give you this lush, deep sound. You can play around with the level of detuning. Okay, that's too much. Let's settle there. We can add the sub oscillator one octave below. Okay, but how do we get that plucky sound? Let's enable the filter. We are going to use the 24 dB per octave filter cutoff, and we are going to assign modulation to this filter cutoff. I'm going to use LFO2 and an exponential and gradual decay sort of envelope. In Dead Mouse's first few songs that got very famous, he was using half notes. We're going to enable the filter for oscillator 1 as well as the sub oscillator. Very cool getting there. Now let's assign a macro to the filter cutoff. And boom, that's it. I swear to God, that's how simple it is. Okay, we can do a few more things to it, but this is the gist of it. So let's add a few effects. I like to put a little bit of distortion just on the bottom end. Let's add a delay. Set the left side to eight notes, the right side to quarter notes, very minimal feedback. And last but not least, a little bit of reverb, nothing too crazy. Bring up the low cut, bring up the high cut, and let's dial this in slowly. And then what you can do, if you want to create some tension release for a drop in your production, you go configure, you click on the macro one knob. So now it gives you this parameter here with an Ableton, which now in turn you can automate to your liking. 
So now let's listen to this in a few scenarios, perhaps some familiar sounding scenarios. Okay, so first I just created a very quick progression where the uh, filter cutoff is opening up slowly to create some tension. And then I put a kick drum on it, as well as a little bit of sidechain compression on the uh, plug track. Let's listen to it. But then there is this one here, which might sound a bit more familiar. And what I'm doing here, I'm using one MIDI track with Cthulhu on it. And this Cthulhu arpeggiator device is triggering three different MIDI tracks with three different instruments on it that I all created in an attempt to recreate this dead mouse plug. So the first one, of course, is Serum again. And I drew in more or less the same automation curve. In this instance of Serum, instead of using an LFO to modulate the filter cutoff, I'm using envelope number two and it gets triggered by the Cthulhu arpeggiator. Every time it gets triggered, it plays this very short, very plucky envelope. Now my macro one knob is mapped to the filter cutoff itself, as well as the decay parameter. So as I'm opening this up, It controls both of those parameters simultaneously. Then I try to recreate this with Ableton instruments only. So here I'm using analog, exact same idea, one macro knob controlling the filter cutoff as well as the filter envelopes decay parameter. And the other thing that I did here, because I believe analog is a mono instrument, so I replicated it three times. I panned one of them hard left, panned one of them hard right, left one in the center, and I detuned all three of them a little bit to imitate the detuning that we achieved in Serum. Same automation curve. And last but not least, I did the same thing with Wavetable using the same automation curve here as well. Okay, so that's basically it. I hope you found this video useful and entertaining. And for that mouse, Joel, if you ever get to see this video, thanks very much for your music. You're awesome. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. If you like what you're seeing here and if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button, share this video with your friends and give us a thumbs up because it helps a lot. And if you're interested in more tutorial videos, make sure you watch the rest of this playlist or this other playlist that I'm going to throw a link for you up here in the corner about the Ableton Simpler so you can go and check that out as well. And as always, don't forget to visit the product page of my website, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you are going to find a ton of free downloads with Ableton sessions, free sample packs, effect tracks, instrument tracks, and a ton of other stuff that you can use in your very own productions. Now don't go too far because the next video is right around the corner. All right, ciao.